we are not going to allow you to come here and address these people. We are not going to allow you to take advantage of the Easter weekend to tell people about politics. Because if people were actually genuinely interested in politics, they would show you that they would be interested in politics. You know, guys, the politicians are the biggest opportunists ever. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Politicians are the biggest opportunists ever. I mean, over the weekend, the politicians understood that the South Africans will be going to the churches to celebrate Easter. Many people will be going to the churches to celebrate Easter. So the politicians saw that as an opportunity to maybe hijack various church services to tell people about the upcoming elections. I'm not going to speak for other people. I'm speaking for myself when I say that watching from outside, it wasn't comfortable for me to watch. It wasn't comfortable for me to watch. I don't know how I would feel if I were to attend a church service and while I'm there praying to the Lord, before you know it, there is Fikilim Balula telling you about the matters of the ANC. I don't think I would appreciate Rani Nose Malema telling me about the policies of the EFF when I took my family to church. And what kind of concessions were actually signed between the church leaders and these politicians? What kind of concessions were signed? Because one of the videos that was actually trending is the video that you are seeing on your screen of Fikri Mbalula actually receiving the prayers. You know, when I first saw this video, <laughs> it was funny to me, man. I was laughing because I was saying, man, there is no way the African National Congress is going to come right. The African National Congress has proven to the people of this country that they don't want to govern. So not even the prayers can actually do or help the leaders of the African National Congress. These people are beyond corrupt. Not even the prayers. It was funny when I first saw this video. But as I kept on watching this video, I started getting angry, 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 and angry. Why? Because when you see these leaders of the churches praying for these politicians, you know what comes to my mind? What are they praying for? What are they praying for? If you are a church leader, you're gonna call and if you are a church leader, you're gonna go out and pray for Fikrim Balula to have strength. You're gonna pray for the ANC leaders to have strength. You're gonna pray for the African National Congress as an organization to have strength. You you are praying for them to have strength to do what? To continue lying to the people of this country. You're gonna pray for Fikrim Balula to continue lying to the people of this country so that their lives can continue being destroyed. You're going to pray for the African National Congress, the same African National Congress that, had, that has destroyed people's lives. You're going to pray for that organization to have strength. Strength to do what? Strength to do what? If you are a, a pastor or a prophet of, of, of a church, you're going to pray for the members of the EFF. What are you praying for? These people are angels of chaos. They have proven that, that they don't want anything to be discussed in South Africa. They don't want the people's lives on the ground to be improved. Because every single time when the parliament continues, these people man, are causing chaos at every single turn. They are causing chaos in parliament. Instead of going to parliament and actually saying that we're going to fight for the rights of the people on the ground, we're going to fight for the people on the ground to actually have a better life. Instead of doing that, these people are going to parliament. Various political parties are going to parliament, inhaling insults at each other, throwing chairs and insulting each other. And you, as a pastor, you're going to pray for those people to have strength. You're going to pr pray for those people to have strength to do what? You're going to pray for these people to have strength to do what? To continue destroying people's lives. You're going to pray for the African National Congress to have strength so that they can do what? They can continue running the country. You're going to pray for President Ramaphosa to have strength so that he can become the president of the country again. Are you going to turn a blind eye on the lives that have been lived by South Africans today? Are you going to turn a blind eye to the administration of Ramaphosa? Are you going to turn a blind eye to the corruption that has been linked to Ramaphosa? Are you going to turn a blind eye to all of that? You're simply going to pray for this man to have strength. You're simply going to pray for the African National Congress to win the elections again so that they can do what? So that they can do what? <sighs> Guys, so that's why I'm saying that me watching, me watching from the outside, watching these people, Watching them, watching them and their and their pastors, watching it was not comfortable for me to watch. 
it was not comfortable for me to watch. I know that President Ramaphosa went to ZCC. President Ramaphosa went to ZCC and he was actually there with uh, Prophet Lekhanyani. I know that Lekhanyani prayed for Ramaphosa. I know that he prayed for Ramaphosa. But again, it begs the question, why are you praying for Ramaphosa to be the president of the country? Don't you see the damage that Ramaphosa has done to the country? I mean, like, personally, if these people, man, if these pastors actually had any credibility, if these pastors had any credibility, they would, sell, they would tell these political leaders that, guys, we are not welcoming you to our churches. Because these people that we are preaching to, these are the same people that you are failing to provide their services. We are not going to allow you to come here and address these people. We are not going to allow you to take advantage of the Easter weekend to tell people about politics. Because if people were actually genuinely interested in politics, they would show you that they would be interested in politics. If the political system has not failed, the people would actually show you that the political system has not failed. So these pastors by themselves, they don't have any credibility in my eyes. These pastors, they don't have any credibility in my eyes. They don't have any credibility. If you're going to continue praying for the politicians of South Africa, what is it exactly are you praying for? What is it exactly are you praying for? You are praying for Ramaphosa. For what? You want Ramaphosa to be the president of the country again. For what? Are you going to ignore everything that has been linked with Ramaphosa? Are you going to ignore everything that Fikile Mbalula has said? Are you going to ignore everything that Fikile Mbalula has done? Because you simply want him, you simply want God to give him strength. For what? <sighs> I wish, man, I could have spoken with the, with the people who actually went to various churches. The people who actually got a chance to be addressed by politicians and actually get to understand how they felt. Actually got to understand how they felt. Because it's not like these people went to the churches because they care about the people. It's not like these people went to the churches because they actually care about the church. No, they don't give a damn about the church. Because for you to give a damn about the church, you're going to have to give a damn about the people. You can't tell me that you're going to fail to provide the people with their services and turn around and go into the church and saying that, yeah, because I'm going to the church, it shows that I care about the people. No, you don't care about the people. You don't care about the people. You don't care about the people. For you to care about the church, you're going to need to care about the people on the ground because the people on the ground are the same people that are attending the churches. Today, people are attending the churches because their lives are turned upside down. Today, people are attending churches because they are asking God for strength because they don't have jobs. Because today, people are attending churches because their children have turned into drug addicts. People today, they are attending churches because their lives have been riddled with crime. And all of these problems that are causing people to go to the church so much, the cause of them are politicians. The cause of them are politicians. Today, people, they don't have opportunities for employment. Why? Because of the governing party. And you're going to pray for the governing party to have strength as a pastor. You're going to pray for the governing party to have strength to do what? I mean, like these people are, are, are like, like he's praying for Fikilam Balula and the African National Congress to make better decisions. <laughs> I mean, like this is a joke. This is a joke. You're gonna you're gonna pray for these people to make better decisions, guys. This is a joke. It is a joke. The steps of a man, righteous men are ordered by God. Order his steps, order his time, order his mindset. Order mighty God to pick as a laser for Siamako's mindset. Guru Kura Tournament will take decisions forward. And in whatever direction that you have placed, Guru Kura Tournament will destiny of South Africa. Siamako's place will dispose of South 
Like it's a joke, man. It's a joke. It's a joke. Imagine, man, these pastors are ignoring everything that these politicians are doing. These pastors, these are the people that we are supposed to care about, the people on the ground. These are pastors, man. These are people that we are supposed to actually care about the people's lives on the ground. These are people that know why people's lives have been turned upside down. And you're going to turn around and pray for the same politicians that are responsible for people's lives being turned upside down. You're going to pray for, for privileged politicians who think that going to church, after going to church, now I'm holier than thou. Everything that I've made in the past, guys, please forget it. All the decisions that have been made by the African National Congress, please forget, forget, forget all of those decisions because we went to Easter service. Service, forget about all the decisions that have been made by the African National Congress because Fikile Mbalula received the prayers from the past. Forget about all of the decisions. Forget about everything that Fikile Mbalula has been saying. I think this is a joke. This is a joke, and I honestly don't know what was the purpose for these people to actually go. And campaign during the Easter service. The church plays a very important role in society, in nation building. Uh, because uh, you're talking about broken families, broken souls. And the reconstruction and development program of the soul is really here in the church. The ANC has prioritized and made it a point that uh, uh, the ANC uh, as an organization, as a party at the leadership level, you've got chaplaincy, which then uh, is a source of this RTP of the soul. Because leaders too can make mistakes. And they I mean like the fact that he thinks that his governance has made mistakes. He thinks that the governance of the African National Congress has made mistakes. They think those are mistakes. Like this, like this, this is not the, the this is not something new. This is something that the African National Congress has been saying for months now that man, we have we, we have made mistakes. We have made mistakes. They don't care about the fact that people's lives have been destroyed. They, they like they 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 categorize their their governance as making mistakes. It's easy for them to say that leaders can make mistakes because whatever those mistakes that have been made, they do not affect them personally. It's easy for them to quote and quote make those mistakes because those mistakes do not affect them. The people that are being affected by those mistakes are people on the ground. Are the people on the ground. That's why I'm saying that this whole thing is a joke, man. This whole thing is a joke, man. Like, it was like, 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 that's why I'm saying like for me to watch these people, man, pander to the churches, man, like it was disgusting for me to watch. Honestly, it was disgusting for me to watch because I thought that maybe these churches also had credibility that would actually tell these people that, guys, maybe this is not the right time for you guys to come here and to try to hijack these services. Maybe this is not the right time. We know that it's election year. We know that you guys are trying to campaign. I mean, can you imagine how disgusting it was during this church service? Because EFF was there, ANC was there. Can you imagine how disgusting it was? And all of these people were actually given the platform. So Fikile Mbalula went on stage to tell people to go to, 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 to go and vote and actually encouraged people to vote for the African National Congress. And Marshall Damini went on the same stage to tell the people not to vote for the African National Congress and to vote for the EFF. So this was not a church service. This was a political rally. This was a political rally. And Easter service was turned into a political rally. <laughs> uh, the place of worship, the place of counseling, it is in the church. It is in the leaders like Apostle and Lomo, who have built this church in the past 30 years to be what it is now, the biggest. And uh, we humbly thank the church also for praying for peaceful elections. But the church also saying to our people, let's come out and exercise our citizens obligation and responsibility to vote so i mean like i don't think the churches can actually 
The church has always been with us in the struggle, even up until today. People might believe what they want to believe about the EFF, but we are church goers, uh, uh, children of, uh, of the church. So we have to come. You hear how he starts his statements. He says that people can believe what they want to believe, but the EFF are church goers. People can believe what they want to believe. So Marshall Zamini actually knows the kind of image EFF has. He knows that people on the ground, they know that EFF are nothing but the angels of chaos. He knows that the EFF, wherever they are, there is chaos. He knows that. That's why he's saying that people can believe what they want to believe. But the EFF are church goers. <laughs> so he's very conscious of the image of the EFF. He's very conscious of that. He knows exactly what people think about the EFF. He knows what people think about the EFF. So why would you go to the church? Because you already know what people think about the EFF. You know what people think about the EFF. I mean, you can't tell me that you are a church goer, you love church, you love the people who attend the church, but at every single turn, those, the same people, instead of servicing them, instead of fighting for the same people to have a better life, you're simply going to cause chaos at every single turn. You're simply going to cause chaos at every single turn. <laughs> the guy says, this is, you, like, you can say whatever that you want to say. But EFF are church goers. <laughs> so those people, they know what people think about them. The ANC knows what people think about the ANC. The EFF knows what people think about them. The fact that they had to take their message into the church, the fact that they had to, we don't know, maybe bribe the, the, the leaders of those churches allegedly for them to have those platforms. But they already know what people think about them. This is why I'm saying that, guys, for me to watch, it was not comfortable. I don't know about the people who actually attended those, those services. But for me personally, it was not comfortable to watch. And I know that I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm not the only one. I would not appreciate having a political figure I mean, at the church telling me to vote for their political party. I would not appreciate it. Because you can clearly see that these people, they don't care about the church. They don't care about the people. They simply care about the fact that it was an Easter service and a lot of people actually went out to the church. This is why they, this is what they were taking advantage of. The fact that it was an Easter weekend and people went to the church. So they saw that as an opportunity to address people about politics. Not because they love church. Not because they love the people on the ground. They simply went there to, to, to campaign or converse for their political parties. Even up until today, people might believe what they want to believe about the EFF, but we are church goers, we are uh, uh, children of, uh, of, of the church, so we have to come home and, and be part of the, with the congregation to worship with them because all of us we need that. We need peace uh, in this country as we are going to elections now. There's uh, high tensions and uh, contestation, especially here in Wasulu Natal. So at, at, at any stage, the only people that can bring peace when us as leaders have it's only uh, the people of the church, uh, the pastors, the apostles, and everyone else. So that's why we respect this institution. We are a, a society, we are a Christian nation, and, uh, and the church plays an important role in making sure that it sustains the fiber of society, to make sure that the, the society uh, remains intact and uh, there's discipline and there's order in this country. So they, they play a big role. Without the church, uh, we are a doomed nation. Then we know the contribution of this. He says that the only people that can bring peace are the people of the church and the leaders of the church. He's not talking about his obligation. He's not talking about his responsibility as the leader of the EFF to actually campaign or to actually advocate for tougher laws against criminals. These are the same people that are saying that illegal immigrants must come into the country. These are the same people that are saying that illegal immigrants are doing nothing in the country. South Africans are talking nonsense when they complain about the illegal immigrants. These are the same people that are calling South Africans xenophobic when South Africans are saying, guys, can we please stop advocating for this nonsense of illegal immigrants because illegal immigrants are doing as they please in our community. These are the privileged EFF leaders who are telling South Africans that South Africans are xenophobic. But today, because they need South African votes, they're going to go to the church and pretend like they care about the people on the ground. 
they're gonna pretend like they care about the people on the ground. So you are not gonna advocate for tougher laws against crime. You are not gonna advocate, you are not gonna try to hold the big guy accountable for the terrible job that he has been doing. But you're simply gonna go out and say that the people who are responsible or the people who can actually make sure that there is peace in the country are the church are the church goers and, and, and the church leaders. You're not gonna say anything about your responsibility. <laughs> this church, right from when it was formed in 1994, and I actually, you know, reminded the church of some of the activities that I know. Uh, for instance, this church had been, you know, feeding the poor. This church has been looking after the people living during the COVID-19 pandemic. Doctors. I mean, where was your government when the church was feeding the poor? Where was your government when the church was looking after people during COVID-19? You're simply going to stand there as the mayor of the place and say that the church was feeding the poor, the church was looking after people during COVID-19. What does it say about your administration? What does it say about your political party? The fact that the church had to feed the people, the fact that church had to take care of the people during COVID-19, what does it say about your political party? What does it say about you as a, as a mayor? <laughs> as who are members of this church, we're actually on the ground with the prophet and the prophetess providing services, trying to assist, uh, you know, government, where the government could not, uh, uh, you know, be actually part. As we know that almost a number of people were sick during that time. They needed advice, they needed counseling on how to deal with the matter. They needed medication, you know, so, uh, yeah, so all we wish for for the church is to continue to exist for the next eight years. Uh, the church must unite because if there's unity in the church, then there's unity in the society. <laughs> if there's unity in the church, there's unity in the society. So says the politicians that are doing everything in their power to... to do what to to divide the people in the country for them to place so much responsibility on the church man it's like it's weird for them to say that the church is the one that can actually bring peace in the country the church is the one that can actually unify the people on the ground whereas these are the same politicians that are working every day and night to make sure that the people in this country hate each other these are the same politicians that are making sure that the people in this country are divided but they are now pretending like they care about the church i know that these people they don't care about the church guys please tell me what you think in the comment section don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part is subscribe 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 my name is thomas mabaso i will see you next time Bye-bye.